this year I played a ton of games, and I want to highlight some of the best ones I played this year. While a lot of them didn't release in 2022, I think I still want to go over the ones that were amazing. Alright, here we go. I got this around 2020, I believe, for a really good price of only $20. It's charming, the gameplay was good, and I liked it so much that I ended up getting the season pass for the game, where I beat Donkey Kong Adventure. I'd even finished the game at the point, but after a while, the difficulty got so annoying to the point where I got off this game. Fast forward to the beginning of 2022, and I finally beat this game. I hope that one day I'll be able to play Sparks of Hope, which looks even better than Kingdom Battle. So, Skyward Sword. You either love it or you hate it. Where do I fall? Well, I love it. Well, I do love it, but it has a lot of issues. It's not my favorite 3D Zelda game, but it's really good and I loved it a lot. Except that I still like Twilight Princess more. I originally got this on the Wii, but I scratched the disc and was never able to finish it. But now I finished the HD version and I loved it. It probably shouldn't have released at $60 though. So, have you ever been interested in Dank and Rumpa, but you don't want to play it? Well, I got the perfect solution for you. The Ace Attorney Trilogy. Man, it is so good. Obviously, there are some similarities with both of them being investigation games where you have to find out who the murderer is. This is much more lighthearted, and I love it. The characters here are awesome, with Phoenix Wright, Maya, Faye, and others being so, so good. After finishing the trilogy, I immediately headed into Apollo Justice, the next saga in this game franchise. One of the best games ever made, Resident Evil 4 is a fantastic game, though I feel like it focuses more on action rather than survival horror, which is a real shame because it's really good, but it would be even better if it was an actual horror game. Well, at least the remake is coming out soon. I know I've talked about Torn a lot, but I really do think this expansion is special and that Monolith Soft went above and beyond. The gameplay was even better than the original, which I really, really liked. Torno would bring a more serious tone to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which was really good, and I really love it. Of course, my only complaint is the pacing, which does get bad after a certain point, but overall, this was a fantastic expansion. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is dark, gritty, and brutal. It is fantastic, and I am so glad I got to experience it on the Switch last year, and it was really, really good. Of course, since it was hard, I struggled a lot with the bosses, but they were so good. My only real complaint is that at the end of the game, the difficulty got to a point where it was unbearable, so I just cheated, and that's how I got the ending. Overall, the game is really good, but the story... It's really forgettable. Overall, Shin Megami Tensei 5 is great, and I like it even more than Persona 4 Golden, which was the previous Shin Megami Tensei game that I played. All jokes aside, the Dinkinrumpa trilogy is really, really good, and I highly recommend you get it. Trigger Happy Havoc is only $4 when it's on sale, and that's amazing. The story, the characters, the gameplay, it's all top-notch here. Except for a few weird parts where the, where the cases are stupid or just too obvious, but that's far and few between. I loved this trilogy so much, and even though V3 was the most controversial one, I ended up still really liking it, and, and I really enjoyed the story it told. I do hope that one day there's going to be a Dinkin' Rumpa 4, but I don't know. The spiritual successor, which is Raincode, looks really good and I'm excited for that. Overall, this is why I love Dinkin' Rumpa. To be frank, I never liked Metroid before. Metroid on the NES was clunky and just not great. Super Metroid I thought was alright, but I got lost constantly. But Metroid Dread? Metroid Dread has a perfect amount of exploration and knowing where to go. It's so good. The controls are really good and it feels fantastic to control as Samus. The graphics, they look really good and oh my gosh, the Emmys. They may be scary, but they're really scary. And I hope this isn't the end of Metroid's new resurgence into the, f into the gaming industry. It's so good and I hope we get another Metroid one day. Though I think we might see Metroid Prime 4 next. 
Anyways, it, this is great to see and I hope we get more. The Somnium Files is an incredibly weird but unique game that I've never seen before. It's dark, it's edgy, but it's also really funny sometimes with, with characters that are lovable, deep, and dark sometimes. The story is one of the best I've ever managed to play in video games and it's awesome. In this game there are multiple routes to take, with each being unique and telling a different story. The only bad part about AI The Somnium Files I'd say would be the gameplay. It's not really that great and especially in Somniums where you literally have no idea what to do so I have to restart a lot. If Zimbalik Chronicles 3 didn't release this year then this would definitely be like my favorite game that I've ever played this year. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a fantastic experience and overall it became one of my favorite games of all time because it's really really good. It combines the best elements of both Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, combining both of the games to make an amazing end to the trilogy. I do think it has the weakest story in the trilogy but overall everything else makes up for it. The gameplay, the characters, the improvements made, they're all so good and that's why I recommend Xenoblade Chronicles 3 for all fans. Thank you.